the way that we return to some degree of normalcy kind of depends on whether we get some type of herd immunity or whether we get some type of uh, summer right. burnout of a seasonal sort, sort of flu. And I don't know if we're guaranteed that. And if we don't, then we're, your whole not. V, UV, your whole VU, reset, you know, whether it's a U or a sort of a elongated V or whatever you call it, those bets are off. And, I, you know, those are the things that I worry about in the middle of the night. I do too, Joe, and I certainly don't know. I mean, if this thing's going to drag on the whole rest of the year and keep us shut down, then heck, you know, you, you could paint a depression if you want to. If you can't turn the economy back on, you know, that's, that's going to be a depression. But I, I get that, and there's some odds of that, but I still think that is a, a very low odds bet. Um, I really think that if you, even from just a novice like I am on pandemics, if you if you look at the trend of what happened at the epicenter of China and you look at the what happened uh, after that to other countries, they all follow a pretty similar pattern here of a surge for a couple of months and then sort of a burnout. And whether that's social distancing or whether it's the it affected much more of the public than we know and there's more people that get immune or whether the virus just runs a course, I don't know. Um, but it sure seems like the evidence we do have strongly suggests that same pattern is likely here. And if it is, then we, we, we won't be fully going again by the last half of this year, but we will be having parts of it moving. And I think if, it, if we get past the hospital crisis, Joe, where we could overwhelm our hospitals, which is a, a, a horrific, horrific thought of people dying in the streets, um, then I think, I really believe that we, we might still have incidents of it, but if we have sufficient hospital capacity, I think we're going to get back to work. Um, you know, if we have a 30 percent unemployment rate in this country, you're going to have social outcry by people that are young and healthy without any other medical conditions that are saying, I want my job back. Give me my job back. Let me go to work again. I need a paycheck. And I think that pressure is going to I'm going to force us to reopen parts of the economy where we can relatively safely, even if the, the virus is right. not completely burned out, provided we have sufficient hospital capacity. Jim, here's the, here's the question I've been thinking a lot about, which is I, am, I completely agree that uh, there's going to be a, a huge pent-up demand for people to get back to work, and pe people want that. But especially those of us who are in the New York area who are seeing uh, the health impact, not just, by the way, the, the mortality rate. I, I'm not even sure that's the accurate, uh, st accurate statistic we should be looking at, but just the number of people that are becoming ill, the number of people that are going to hospitals. Um, you know, in our family, uh, my, my son's music teacher just passed away last night as, as a result of COVID. And I think that actually there are people, and, and maybe it's not reached where you are yet, uh, uh, genuinely scared um, about the prospect uh, of going out and potentially uh, getting COVID. And, and, and maybe they're not going to die, but uh, they could end up in the hospital. And even if you could argue to me that there's going to be space in the hospital, I'm not sure that that's a, a great gamble uh, at the moment. And so while I'm sure there are people who would like to, like to go out into the world all over again, I think there's going to be especially in places that are hard hit, I think it's going to be much more timid, um, or at least you're going to have to get over that in a very different way. And I'm not sure that's, that's being built into this analysis. What do you think of that? I, I think you're right, Andrew. I, think it, it, I don't think we're going to snap right back from this. There's going to be longer-term effects. I mean, people aren't going to get, hop on an airplane again for a while on a crowded plane or go to a crowded baseball stadium. I, I totally agree with that. But look, this, 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 I'm looking at the stock market, and the stock market, when it hit its low, had, had fallen 34 percent on the S&P 500 in 23 days. That was the quickest bear market in post-war history by a margin of six to seven times. On average, the previous 13 bear markets had fallen 5 percent in the first 23 days of a bear market. This one fell 34 percent, six to seven times more. And I, I see that same phenomena across the financial markets. Bond spreads widened out much quicker in this crisis than they did in the past. Commodity prices fell much, much quicker than they, than they did in the past. 
The, the bond yields fell much quicker in this crisis. The Fed responded much quicker. Fiscal policies responded. My point is, this is a bear market at warp speed, and it's already discounted much quicker uh, what, what the damage is to come uh, than any other bear market in post-war history. So we're going to have a lot of damage yep. that's now going to hit the economy, but I'm not right. so sure that most of it isn't already in the financial markets.